In today's episode, we have Eric Wright, the founder of Vets to PM and Vetstone, back for his second time on the show, coming right up. Hi there, and welcome to Getting to Hire, the show that's helping you, the military member, successfully transition from your military career to your new civilian one. In today's episode, we have our first return guest, Eric Doc Wright, the founder of Vets to PM and Vetstone, joins us today. Eric, thank you so much for coming back to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Tony Morrow, of course, brother. Why wouldn't I? It's always such a gas to be on with you, man. So I have to say that, uh, Eric, you are by far the most popular guest I've ever had on the show. As far as uh, your videos are consistently the best, most watched, and longest watched videos ever on the show. And it's not only because you are a dynamic, crazy, exciting guest to have, but you are all about project management. So for those of us who, who haven't seen those other episodes, which I will link up to uh, above our heads right now, but also um, if you, they haven't seen that before, but they want to get the, the, the skinny on who Eric is and what Vets to PM is, can you give us a quick two minute origin story on who you are, what Vets to PM is and what Vetstone is? Yeah, so who I am, right? So, uh, you know, nobody cares except for the fact that I was a military veteran. I was in two services. I transitioned out twice and never once heard the word project management. I'm not the smartest guy in the audience, but even I, if somebody would have stood in front of my TAPS class and said, hey, so projects are temporary, unique endeavors, um, and it takes all these interpersonal skills that military leaders have. And oh, by the way, you make about 95,000 plus uh, on average when you when you do project management. Anybody in here done something like that? I'd have raised my hand, dude. I was a whole technician, right? So uh, that's who I am, but I didn't know that. And so I knocked around in the, what I call the job desert, Tony, for 12 years, man. Super dark, super cold out there, blistering in the sun. I found Vetstone, man. What is that? It's a way to translate all your military leadership into project management. And guess what? Civilians know what a project manager is. They don't know what a whole technician is or an artillery officer or a combat medic. Like they don't, they don't know what to do with you. But if you look like and sound like and act like a project manager, dude, there's a huge global shortage of those right now. And they'll pay handsomely to get you for that secondary occupation experience, I like to say. So what is Vets to PM? It's a company that I started and we hired the best in the business in each one of their individual uh, slots and they deliver on the promise of Vets to PM. We help military veterans become project managers. And that's all we do, bro. So in like four years, we've placed 484 guys and gals into 282 Fortune 500 companies and they're all making about 95,000 a year. So we are actually contributing to their household success and to our great nation's economy. Bang. Wow. So if uh, if you're watching the show and you don't know what a project manager is, as we relate it to our military experience, because I mean, I remember the first time we had our discussion uh, and I was trying to get my head around project management. I covered it in my MBA, but it wasn't quite like the in-depth PMBOK analysis that you know you cover when getting your PMP. So project management, if you were to say like you do in your in your courses, when you when you translate it for the military member, what is project management in relation to their experience? It's actually a mindset and you use it every day. You're gonna to go to the grocery store, you make a grocery list, you're looking for this item, that item. It's a logistics supply chain project, stole that from my buddy, John Holt. If you're gonna plan a wedding, a ceremony, a retirement ceremony, um, you're gonna do a process improvement project. Uh, so this shop on board a boat doesn't run as efficiently as it could. I'm gonna rearrange the folks, I'm gonna rewrite the SOPs, we're gonna make it hum better. Bang, project. So, you know, the, the commander comes down, the sergeant major comes down and says, hey, I need these artillery guns closer to the bad guys so we can be more effective at keeping their head down, right? Cool, boss. Temporary, unique endeavor. The guns were way in the back. Tomorrow they're up front. They're more effective. I delivered a unique result in a temporary time-constrained format. So almost any military mission or exercise you ever did in the military, if you were responsible for planning it, resourcing it, leading it, controlling it, and briefing it out, man, you're a project manager. And then the question becomes, well, hey, man, I've done that like for 497 times the last 10 years of my career. Well, now you're a program manager and they pay even more money for those folks. So if you've, if you've never heard of Project Man before today and you're a military member, then obviously this is, 
this is a wake up call because all that military experience and that military lingo terminology that you use in that environment translates into project management in the civilian world. So same task, same job, different language. And that's all. And, and you know what, Tony, here's, here's a benefit that doesn't often get talked about. One of the things I really struggled with during that 12 years when it got the darkest is I had lost my sense of purpose, my sense of identity, my sense of mission. I was waking up every day, just punching a time clock, right? Felt like driving my car into a tree some days. Um, dude, you you help organ, you tack, you use your tactical knowledge, abilities, competencies, and interpersonal skills to affect organizational change through influencing small, high-performing teams. You have a sense of purpose. You have a sense of mission. You have a sense of identity. Like you're the guy or gal that the strategy that the executives go to when strategy needs fixed, man. I mean, you know, you take a humble uh, uh, welder, man, from back in the day and you put him in a suit coat and you give him a project plan and he gets to use all of those, those military leadership skills and abilities you develop, man. I'll tell you what, bro, it's the land of professional milk and honey. Anybody can do it if I can do it, right? <laughs> Well, to be fair, as you can see in the title, uh, Eric has more than a few letters behind his name. Uh, not only are you a PhD, but of course you're, you're a project manager. Um, but you, you're, the, the work that you've done and the, the company you've built and the, the tools that you have through Vetstone and Vets2PM, that it's, it's grown so much in recent years. Uh, beyond just helping, of course, uh, veterans get their project management designation, that that specific uh, narrow focus has expanded somewhat. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the different programs and courses that vets to pm offers and, and how that validates or how that kind of builds the qualifications and the wealth of your resume in the civilian space? Yeah, so, you know, we've been at this for four years now. January 1, 2015 is when we put the flag in the ground and said, hey, we're going to go, we're going to go change the way that veterans transition. Um, specifically project management. So uh, in the last four years, we've been working with corporate America, Fortune 100 companies, Fortune 250 companies, and we keep hearing the same thing. Hey, you know, not only do, you know, you guys think you have a veteran employment transition problem. We, corporate America, have a bigger problem. We have a, an extreme shortage of, of talented, experienced, credentialed project managers. So can you help us with our workforce woes? Again, man, not the quickest guy on the uptake, but I'm like, hey, dozens of people are telling me that we should help them like shore up their project management workforce. Hey, maybe we should go figure out how to help them shore up their project management workforce, right? I mean, okay, so what do we do? So we offer project management services. We will fish for you, right? Mm -hmm. We source you talent if you wanna train and have your own organic fishing fleet of fishermen. And we also can help you build project management offices so that you can learn to fish and sustain uh, uh, fish for yourselves over a sustained, you know, the foreseeable future. Um, and I'll tell you what, Tony, that has really caused the place to explode because now not just the veteran community cares that we're helping, but corporate America cares that we're helping. Like, okay, now it matters. Now we see the, the easy math, right? Like you can help us do projects better, faster, cheaper. So, man, we're working on a SHRM course right now. We're working on a project leadership course. The, the CIVDIV is star for leadership. Uh, and in fact, leadership is one of the three legs of PMI's talent triangle. So, you know, and in, and in the civilian workforce, there's good leaders. But it's not like the military where we are formally trained. Decision making about who goes where and does what billets is centralized. And leadership in the military is not discretionary, right? It's not like a hobby, like I'll read a book or take a workshop. Man, you get promoted based on your capability. And if you can't do it, you get out, right? Like, so in the Civ Div, it's decentralized. It's kind of discretionary. Hey, maybe Tony wants to be a leader. I don't know. Let's try it out. We put him in there. He messes the shop up. We take him out. We put him back where he came from. So it's it's uh, it's it's a lot less centralized. It's a lot less formal. Um, so we are now showing them, hey, here's how to do some military leader mind, leadership mindset stuff and increase your project delivery success rate, which increases your bottom line, which advances people's careers. We can help you with your workforce, uh, and so that's really caused it to explode. We're doing agile certification now with PMI. Uh, we're a registered ed education provider of PMI. Um, 
So yeah, just, just doing some really cool things to help corporate America shore up its project management workforce. And oh, by the way, it employs military veterans in meaningful, lucrative careers. Uh, I love doing what I do every day. Giving, giving purpose again, like you said, like giving purpose back to that veteran who, you know, when we leave the military, when we leave that bubble, we, we lose that, that, that purpose, that, that, that intensity and that mission to go forward in, in whatever our professional like occupation was in the military, but yeah, we, we lose that. So just to recap, yeah. not only are you helping and serving us as a veteran community by helping us translate those military skills into the civilian equivalency in the project management space. So bam, that's one. Two, you're also providing specific job placement for those vets once they get those qualifications. You're like, these are the opportunities for you to be employed, practice those skills, and be paid well for it. And then on top of that, if your organization looking to, you know, access this wealth of talent, this pool of, of expertise that you are nurturing, developing, and growing, uh, you provide a service for those those organizations that corporate America to be able to access, uh, you know, this, this team of proven and highly skilled project managers, which, which is phenomenal. Uh, now you mentioned also that you are, uh, an edge, like you have a, a relationship and education partnership with uh, PMI. Can you explain a little bit about that as far as what does that mean? Um, how does that translate for uh, the accreditations? And we'll, we'll cover that as well, uh, that PMI offers. And, and what are the courses that translate into different accreditations that PMI, the Project Management Institute, uh, offers, in accredit uh, offers as accreditation? Yeah, so basically a registered education provider is a status that PMI awards. You've got to go through a, it's, it's kind of like an ISO process or something. Here's all of our curriculum. Here's how we train project managers. Here's how we verify that we're consistently improving our courses and our offerings. Um, here's how we audit our records. Um, you, you know, and PMI comes in and looks and says, hey, you're doing that congruent with our values uh, our quality standards are whatever. So in the marketplace, what it kind of does is the the secondary effect is folks see REP and they assume that you're a high quality training content provider, right? Um, and for us, when you couple that with the numbers, the results, the big bowls of proof pudding I got for everybody and their brother and sister that wants some, when you couple those two things together, what the marketplace sees and hears and feels is, hey man, you know, if if I do projects around here uh, and I need some talent and I need some 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 no kidding, you know, productive, uh, good stuff training, I'm going to call a gang at Vets to PM, right? So couldn't be more humbled and, and thrilled by that. Our course catalog is exploding. We're adding another two courses this year. We're going to add another couple next year. Um, companies are now, you know, uh, engaging us to consult with them. Okay, we go in and they've got their PMs in place but we do audits, you know, and again, man, it just fits with the veteran. You know, we send them in there like, okay, Tony, I need you to advise and assist brother. They need some help on the ground with the project. The vet goes, dude, I got that. Right. And so, um, man, it's just such a cool fit. And, 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 and it obviously animates me, right? People are like, dude, you have got to lay off the coffee. And I'm like, man, <laughs> this comes from waking up every day. And I know exactly what I'm doing here. I know why I was born and I know what I was, what I'm supposed to be doing right? This is no longer a random ride on the rock, man. Like, bang, I'm dialed in and ready to get after it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's infectious, I have to say. Uh, but what, what's, what I find so telling about it is that, I mean, obviously you're passionate about it, but project management uh, gives us that sense of fulfillment. As far as, it's just, it's just like a, you know, it's a, it's a job, it's a practice, it's a behavior. But it's something we're already conditioned and trained to do as military members, and therefore you're just practicing something that you you're already good at, and you know you can hit the ground running, and you get that sense of accomplishment. You feel good about the positive results that you're able to affect for the organization for yourself. It's mm -hmm. it, it's it's amazing. Um, okay, so when it comes to uh, project management, so people who are listening to this show now, they say, okay, I'm a veteran. I like project management. I, I, I like what you're talking about. Tell me more. So <clears throat> as a, as a veteran looking to get uh, the introduction qualification, the PMP project management professional um, designation, what do I need and how do I get it? Okay. So PMI has a couple standards. PMI says you need experience. It has to be 
relevant and it has to be fresh, okay? So you need a minimum of 4,500 hours leading and directing project activities over 36 cumulative months. And these are just the minimums, dude, um, within the last eight years, right? Uh, so that you have, you know, you didn't like get handed a project, get lucky, knock it over the back wall. And uh, that's the only thing you got in the quiver, right? Mm -hmm. Like you consistently have been delivering projects successfully and you know a thing or two about your toolbox and your methodologies and your processes and what a, you're a professional, right? And project management professional, the M, the manager part is like right in the middle, right? So I can set up the systems and then lead the people, right? The professional part to get missions done. Okay. So, um, what it really does for the veteran is if Tony translates his 15, 18, 22 years of Naval service into a resume that says project manager, I just happen to do it for the Department of Navy, right? Mm -hmm. Then the, the hiring manager is still thinking, well, how do I know that's credible? Oh, a third party organization responsible for training and teaching and researching the profession of project management uh, said so, right? So the PMP just kind of, in the minds of a hiring manager, legitimizes that resume. So the PMP doesn't make Tony a project manager. It just legitimizes the resume full of project management experience that they're looking at. And if they do a diligent job interviewing Tony, they'll figure out whether he's a good fit for the organization or not, right? So even if you see PMP on a piece of paper, man, you know, caution hiring managers, you still got to do diligent interviews. You still got to figure out if they're a good culture fit, right? And vet, you should be figuring out if they're a good culture fit for you, right? You're interviewing them too. Hey, I know what I'm going to do for you. I've got PM chops. I'm going to come here and knock all your projects out of the park, right? You're going to be successful. Your bottom line is going to increase. Mm -hmm. What's in this for me, right? So, you know, walk in there, don't walk in there and be arrogant, but walk in there with a bit of swagger. Like, hey, you have a problem. I'm the solution. I'm going to help you. How are you going to help me? Here's what I need. So to recap then, 4,500 hours in the past eight years in, yep. you know, documented and consecutive projects. Now that 4,500 hours, that's if you have a university degree, correct? And if you don't have that degree, what's the, what's the requirement then? Yeah. So if you don't have a four-year degree or above, right, you need 7,500 hours over 60 months within the last eight years. So, you know, so for the average soldier, sailor, airman, marine, you know, a couple hitches, E6 or above, you're probably going to need to document about four to six projects in category A. And uh, you're probably going to need to document, I don't know, 10, 12 projects in category B. And somebody just heard that and said, well, I have a two-year degree. I only have a high school diploma. I can't climb that mountain. 7,500 hours, 60 months. Holy cow. So, hey, Tony, I, you know, I was helping hundreds of people a week translate their military experience. And there's only one of me, brother. And I already get up at 05 and rack out about, 10, you know, 2200, 10 o'clock or whatever. I just couldn't squeeze any more juice out of the day, right? So what I did is I created a piece of artificial intelligence, machine learning semantic software. Like you type in stuff in your web browser and it tells you what it thinks you're looking for. Yeah, that same kind of algorithm, brother. We built one, military leader, bang, bang, bang on the keyboard. In go my missions, in go my, uh, uh, my exercises experience and out comes a PDF report of what I look like as a commercial project manager, brother. And now you can say, hey, I'm PMP qualified. Mm -hmm. I'm not wearing it. I don't have it pinned on, but I'm qualified. That right there, man, we've helped two, three dozen folks get jobs because now the employer's thinking, whoa, so I get a qualified project manager, but I don't have to pay the premium because they don't have the PMP? Man, sign me up all day long, right? So <laughs> like, they can't lose <laughs> and corporate America is getting their workforce shored up. I mean, win-win, right? And so if I'm, if I'm kind of in doubt or I, I have some questions about what it's going to take for me to get the log those hours and, and, and get the, the requirements to be able to sit the PMP exam, because it's an exam you have to sit like, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's not just ticks in the box and boom, they give it to you. You, you have to, there's a, there's a, a textbook that goes with this. There is a, like a, you know, a standard operating procedure that you have to learn and understand once you have those hours banked and you have it accredited, then you can sit the exam, sit the exam, pass the exam, and then you can get the PMP. Um, so Vetstone is the software you're talking about. Vetstone, once you type in your information, is able to 
uh, structure and validate your experience, whether it be military or otherwise. It doesn't have to be military experience. It just happens that your military experience fits very well in the PMP or project management space. And so you punch it into the Vetstone algorithm. It will spit out to you uh, how you meet the requirements and then away you go. Now, if for whatever reason, I don't have the 4,500 hours or the 7,500 hours to be able to, to, to meet that requirement. Is, is the PMP the only accreditation that I can get, or is there something else that can, that I can build on that I can work my way forward? Or once I get the PMP, is that, is that the, the, the peak of the mountain or, or is there other, are there other accreditations or, or specialties that I can get after that? Uh, great question, Tony. So there is a uh, kind of a little brother to the PMP called the Certified Associate uh, Project Manager. And and that recognizes that you are a dedicated project professional and that you're working towards your PMP. But, you know, the company that you're interviewing has to know what the acronym is and they have to value project management, like a disciplined approach to project management before that enters into the conversation, right? Um, I'm not disparaging it. I'm just saying that that you know, you're, you may have to do a little education in the interview with the hiring manager about what it is that you have. Um, and then once you pin the PMP, it's kind of, you know, you're a specialized generalist. Hey, I'm a manager that does really good at project management, right? Like not IT management or HR management or whatever, like project management. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can go on to get a risk credential, you can get a program credential, you can get a scheduling credential. Um, and 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 PMI is not the only animal in the zoo, man. I mean, the Institute of Project Management out of uh, you know Australia does a great job. They do a, they look at your experience, um, and you interview with a panel of folks uh, to to legitimize that experience, right? And then you take some training uh, and you achieve certification that way. Um, uh, you know, there's the uh, the International Institute of Project Management. So there's there's several different governing bodies. Um, but what I would tell you is that in the U.S. at least, the, the PMI is kind of the recognized leader. I mean, really what they did is they got to market first with a field manual on how to do projects, the PMBOK guide, right? You mm -hmm. were talking about SOP. And then they um, came out with a test that kind of test the test, uh, uh, the project manager's knowledge of the field manual. So that really, they were kind of the first ones in the game. And that's kind of the stake in the ground that, that everybody else is following. But uh, yeah, I mean, translating your experience and talking and looking like and acting like a project manager, that's really the key. That's the key. So um, like you say, PMI is not the only game in town. However, in North America, they are the, the big dog. They are, yeah. you know, they're they're the the organization that brings the greatest weight and credibility. And of course, if you if you are, you know, if you're watching this from a you know different place in the world like Australia, there are other organizations that you can you can tap into as well. But PMI in North America for us here, uh, you know, that's the dominant one. And to understand. You know, we mentioned like a university degree. Do you have a four-year degree to be able to get your PMP and so on? You, you certainly don't need that to get the PMP. And and where does like a PMP fit in the hierarchy of all these, you know, like for example, you've got a PhD behind your name, that hence the doc right. You know, like where where does it all fit? And I think the best way for people to think of it is if you're an accountant, at least in Canada here, if you're an accountant, you're you're uh you know, you're a certified accountant, a CA. Uh if your uh, if you're a certified a logistician, you have a P log. Uh, if you are uh, in the HR industry, there's HR designations. There are professional accreditations that make you or validate you in those specific industries to say I have expertise in this. Boom, and that's what that is. So when it comes to project management, that's exact. It's the same thing that's going on here. A PMP or of the various other accreditations you talked about, the niches that you can get into when it comes to scheduling and programming and, and IT, uh, you can, those are accreditations that speak to your specialty, your area of expertise when it comes to project management, specifically for the PMP in those other niche markets or those niche uh, aspects of project management for that uh, and so on. So it just, it's just a, it's a, it's a plus beside your name. It's an added value. It makes you that much more uh, credible and valuable to the organization. Yep, Tony. So what I would add, man, is for all those that are still in uniform watching, 
do yourself a huge favor. About 18, 24 months out, maybe a little earlier, try to lock down a four-year degree, right? Um, if you're like me, if you're like a lot of vets I talk to, I talk to hundreds a week, you're probably credit rich and degree poor, right? So once you start converting those credits into degrees, <laughs> you might never stop like I did. But the point is, is that if you can get a four-year degree and you can get an applied credential, like a SHRM, like a CPA, like a what's a license, uh, like a PMP, what that shows the hiring manager and the HR people in particular is, hey, Eric is qualified to be interviewed for this position. I've got education, I can spell and I can spell project management, and then I've got a credential that says I can do project management, right? Um, then you get in the door and you talk from your deep wealth of experience and interpersonal skills and whatever. And then when they put you on the job, project management's an applied field. You either can do it or you can't. And if you can't, they're gonna figure it out really quickly and you'll be doing something else, right? So once you get in there and you hustle it and, and you crank start cranking projects you know consistently getting on base with delivering projects and cranking them over the wall every once in a while i mean you really demonstrate your ability to hunt kill and add significant value to the organization quickly while making everybody else better around you right you're you're like a force multiplier um so again i mean i'm sure i'm off on a tangent brother but if you can't tell i mean project management is what allows a kid who has no idea what he's doing when he gets out of the navy at 23 24 years old to grow up someday and do something meaningful and make a fine bit of coin taking care of family doing it uh, and leaving organizations better than when he found them. It's just, it's the coolest gig in the world, man, I think. Well, and so if I'm a military member and I'm, you know, months away from release or I've just released them and I'm a veteran now, how do I, how do I get in, in touch with you? How do I connect with you? How do I start down this road to get those credentials to, you know, to be, to have, to have the awesome life and be so excited about getting up in the morning as you are. Yeah. Perfect question, man. So if you just want general knowledge, like what is project management? What's the opportunity? How do I get started? Go to www.vets2pm.com, right? It's even in the name, veteran to project manager, right? That's all we do. So go to vets2pm.com. If you, if you want to see if you even qualify for a foray into this career field, go to Vetstone, right? put in a couple projects, let the algorithm um, show you what you look like. And oh, by the way, whatever time you invest, you can use it on your resume, you can use it on your LinkedIn profile. You can So even if you don't go get the PMP application, you might as well document your project management experience because the reality is, regardless of what you do for a living, hey, I'm an accountant, hey, I'm an HR guy, hey, I'm a finance gal, hey, I'm a, I'm a logis logistician, uh, regardless of what you do, Mm -hmm. You're going to lead projects in your functional area or you're going to be assigned to be a SME on those projects because you are an expert in your functional area. So you might as well get credit for that experience on your resume and make a difference and get that extra interview or get that extra salary bump or whatever, right? Um, so, so yeah, so vetstone, uh, militaryvetstone.com is where you'd do that. OK, and then if you have project management chops, you're already out there, Tony, you didn't need Eric to tell you this. You already figured out you're a vet, you're a project manager, you're out there uh, knocking out projects. What I would recommend is um, email my director of career services, Kathy McLatt at Kathy, C-A-T-H-Y at vets to pmcom and get in our Purple X database, dude. It's the monster.com for veteran project management talent, dude. It's cleared. They're ex they're, they're, the folks in there are credentialed. They're experienced. They're cleared in a lot of cases. Hundreds and hundreds of them are cleared. And uh, yeah, you can just source your talent right out of there. So, um, And we have employers that pay us every year to have first, first mover access in that database and those candidates. And they look in there for folks to hire when they get open recs, right? So, so I would tell you that's your third door. Uh, uh, that's an extra door prize is email Kathy. Say, hey, I saw Doc on Tony's show. I want to get into Purple X and get to see if they crush it. Bang, too easy. So all those links will be uh, in the description below. But on one last thing, and, and, and just to, to touch on it quickly, all the, that, all the added value you talked about as far as the education and the connection with the opportunities and, and being part of that database to be able to be job placed in, in different places. But you're also developing a mentor program specifically for vets uh, in, in this project management space. Can you give us a quick, quick teaser on what that's all about? 
Oh, yeah. So we've been at this for four years. So we're kind of long enough into the game where we have people coming back and saying, hey, so I've been doing project management in pharma. I'd really like to go into construction. Hey, I've been doing construction. I'd really like to go into aviation. Uh, OK, right. Or, hey, I need another credential. So we we quickly those of us on staff at Vesta PM like ran out of capacity, right, to be mentoring. I mean, I run our call center every day from like one to four and I'm still the capacity. Right. So. Um, a company that we had been doing some work with out in Arizona, Joe Puzz, uh, PM Radio Joe, uh, has the PMO squad and they go in and build project management offices. And so he and I started working together collaboratively to play some vets and stuff. And he just, he just loved the mission. And so Tony, our companies funded a beta test. We built a digital platform like an ACP, American Corporate Partners, or Veterati, or whatever, a digital mentorship platform database. And we've been running the beta test for three quarters. We have more industry project managers and more veteran protégés than we've got room for in the database. And we've increased the number of billets every quarter. So next month, man, we are launching the Veteran Project Manager Mentor Alliance, right? It's been privately funded. We're running out of bandwidth. We're funding this thing and we're like, okay, I think the beta test is successful. People will actually use this thing and participate in this thing if we build it. They'll come. They're already standing in line around the block, man, like an opening for Avengers movie or Star Wars or something, right? So, um, so yeah, we are um, going to take that live. So we're looking for board members. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for industry PMs that want to say thank you to veterans in a tangible way and mentor veteran project managers. Um, we're looking for veteran uh, project management protégés to get in there and get mentored. Um, and I can tell you from my own experience, you know, the kid you, the, the guy you see sitting here is not what I looked like as a 24 year old. It's not in those kid that thought he knew everything and knew about that much, right? So I needed mentors at key pivotal watershed moments in my life saying, hey kid, I see something bigger than what you see right now. Here's what I think you should be doing. Here's some ways I think you should be doing that. So mentoring, right? Like Kevin Spacey says, man, push the button and get the elevator back down for the folks still on the ground floor, man. Help raise them up, right? So um, yeah, VP MMA. We don't have a website yet because we're still building a thing, uh, but but you can you can uh, visit uh, pmosquad.com and go to their veteran mentoring page. And that's the program as it currently exists. We just are building the NPO, the nonprofit organization around it as we speak. That's phenomenal. So basically the takeaway here is it's going to be the Avengers of project management. Got it. <laughs> I love it, man. Love it. All right. Well, uh, so I cannot thank you enough, Eric, for coming back on the show, sharing this wealth of knowledge and, and, and all the work that you're doing, um, the ways that you're helping this community, uh, the value that you're providing, again, not only us as, as veterans, but I mean, even corporate America, you're talking about like the value, the access to the resource that is us, that is veterans, that is the project managers with the experience and the talent and the, the drive to, to bring those results. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're the glue that's bringing that all together, that's binding us all together uh, and creating those opportunities. So for, from a member of, of our community, I want to thank you very much for all the work that you're doing and, 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 and continue to do as you just said, in a month, you've got the Avengers of the project management world that are going to be coming to you. So that's that's phenomenal. Thank you so much, Eric. Dude, you're tearing me up, Tony, man. We're, we're Navy brothers. Dude, I, I love what I do. Uh, I'm so humbled and honored to get to do it. Um, and I'll help anybody out there, man. Just look me up on LinkedIn, Eric Doc Wright. Hit Vets of PM, whatever. Shoot me an email. I'm a big text email guy. Um, and just humble, humbled and honored to be able to help out, man. So that's what I do for a living is help out. So hit me. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all those links, and there were so many that we talked about, will be in the show notes uh, down below. So just look down below. You'll be able to see the links, the emails, uh, the websites, and all those things that we were just talking about. Eric is a phenomenal resource. vets to pm is a phenomenal um, accelerator for your ability to be successful in your civilian career after the military. So thank you so much for joining us today here on Getting to Hired. Looking forward to hearing and seeing you in the next episode. Bye for now.